Hello everyone and welcome back to Bricks and Dragons. Today we are looking at the Star Saber. So we are continuing on with our review of some of the Star Wars ships. Um, so uh, looking at the Star Saber, um, this was an experimental fighter produced by the Republic Fleet Systems and tested by Jedi pilots during the Great Sith War. Uh, long, sleek craft and sleek and a single seed starfighter, nonetheless, were equipped with hyperdrives. Although the ships were capable of swift acceleration, uh, their low maneuverability to speed ratio and slow stick reaction gained them the reputation of a dangerous and unwieldy craft. Uh, heavy blaster cannons and deflector shields gave the Star Saber more offensive and defensive capabilities than contemporary fighters. However, and the great uh, the Galactic Republic pressed the craft into service despite their design flaws. Uh, from their initial combat mission against the Krath stronghold from Signar uh, until the retirement of their line with the advent of the Autec class tactical strike fighter, the Star Saber was the was largely flown by Jedi. Um, who could compensate for us by using the force for the fighter's design flaws, which were never really corrected. Um, so as we look here, this is, and, and as we will keep going along, this is all done in the uh, D6 uh, set of stats here. So we do have a fighter that is roughly about 6 0.75 meters long. So this is a relatively small fighter craft. The images I have are property to whoever had created them. They are not my own. I want to make that known. I did find them um, using just a general search. Um, so what we have here, there are some slight differences between what we see here and what I have listed. Um, so from what... Um, what I'm able to look up here, uh, they're saying that you can carry about 45 kilograms of cargo, so roughly about 90 to 100 pounds. Uh, on our system here, they have 25 kilograms, denoting that it's an older craft. Uh, Jedi were not as likely to carry as much stuff. And this does come from Power of the Jedi source book. Um, so... Uh, of course, this is an old Republic. If they're fighting the, the Sith during the, the Sith Wars here. Um, let's see. We do have one week of consumables. Uh, there is a hyperdrive. Uh, it has a computer, but it's only list, limited to doing two hyperdrive or hyperspace jumps. So in other words, you're going to have two jumps pre-programmed, presumably where you're going to and one route coming back. Uh, maneuverability, as stated be uh, before, is only 1D plus 2, so that's really not the greatest. Space, we're doing uh, fairly good. It is a fairly fast fighter. Um, we can do about 100 and, or 1,100 kilometers per hour in an atmosphere. has nice broad wings from the looks of it, so it should be able to fly fairly easily. Um, although, when I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking that this is only... Uh, what do we see? Just under seven meters? Um, I don't know. This just seems a little off here, but um, it's it's how they describe it and how they come up with it. To me, it looks like it should almost be double that. But um, we have a hull of 4D, so this has a very tough hull, and it has some really good shields. Um, I think if we could maybe get fixed the maneuverability, I think you would have a pretty good fighter. And I think they're on to something here. Um, as far as our sensors go, we we have a passive of 20. So that's about um, uh, 2 kilometers. We have 4 kilometers for scanning outwards, 6 kilometers for a search, and only 300 meters for being up close for a focus. We do have the two heavy blaster cannons. They are fire-linked. Uh, so... With a fire control of 1D, so it is a little bit more of a rudimentary sight on there. And they do some really good damage at 6D. Um, space range, they can go for short range, would be uh, 1 to 500 meters. Um, 
then we're going out to a kilometer and then 1.7 kilometers out. Uh, really, the space and atmosphere are, are about the same. It's just that typically when we're looking at space, we will have, you know, boxes to, to separate us so we have an idea where we're all going here. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, when we're looking at it, it's seeing two heavy blaster cannons. Uh, if you look at the mouse here, I'm going to guess that these are these pylons and these must be for sensors or something because that looks like something else. And this is what we, we get. So, um, you know, I'm thinking that this, this top picture is a little closer to what we were looking at. Maybe this was a thought for like a rail system or something that we could put some missiles on that didn't really mature. Um, and of course we have the cannons out here. I don't know. But when we're looking at this one, I'm going to say this is probably a modified. Um, so we actually have four cannons here and, and on the outside here trying to improve our maneuverability because we don't have that on the other one. This is probably an upgraded version that someone probably modified or whatever. Um, seeing that it's got a little bit better. I just grabbed these two pictures. There was another one uh, on here and that. Um, continuing on. See, now, here's here's a difference. Because I'm looking at Wikipedia. So if you want to know where I'm getting this, this is from Wikipedia. Um, they're seeing, Wikipedia is seeing 13 meters. Here in the original Power of the Jedi source book, they're seeing 6.5. So, um I would say Wikipedia might be a little closer. Maybe grab a, a range here. Um, so Wikipedia was seeing 13 meters long. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so continuing on. At 13 meters in length, the Republic Fleet Systems Star Saber, the XC-01. Starfighter was long, low, sleek, uh, produced from the narrow hull, uh, or protruding from the narrow hull, where two wings fitted with weapons outriggers. Two fins emerged from the tail air tail of the craft uh, above the engines. Uh, a military snub fighter available to civilians only with regular or regulated sails. So this is saying that this is a well, it's still military, but, you know, you could buy it if you really wanted to, but it's all regulated. Uh, Star Saber was equipped with a deflector shield, which, you know, uh, we've said that it actually has a pretty good shield system here. Um, and two heavy blaster cannons. Um, seeing the single craft could carry 45 kilograms of cargo, which is a deviance from what they had here. Um the fighter, nonetheless, was equipped with a Class II hyperdrive. So uh, they're seeing a 1.5 in the power or in the you know, power of the Jedi source book. So this is this is the book you actually got. Wikipedia is seeing what they believed it was. Maybe it was said in one of the comics. So I really don't remember if the power of the Jedi. Um, I want to say it was a novel, but I'm I'm wondering if it wasn't a graphic novel. Um, I want to say I probably have this book somewhere. Uh, I do have so many. I think I have all of them as a PDF that I had gotten everything as a PDF when I couldn't find them. Because uh, I know I'm an old man. Uh, when I was looking for a lot of this stuff, there were still books I couldn't find in a store. So it was just I grabbed anything I could. But still there's books I just could not get. And some of them I had to get used. So, um Dun, 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 dun. Let's see, where are we? So, the Star Saber. Uh, from its development during the Craft Holy Crusade, was considered an inefficient but necessary tool to combat the threat posed by the Sith. Considered an experimental vessel during the testing phase um, and I'm going to murder this one, Oasis, in 3997 BBY, uh, the Star Saber was nonetheless pressed into service against Kraith forces, uh, which it was designed to combat. In the assault of Kraith, uh, 
throne world of Empress Tita, Jedi Knight Dace Dace used the Star Saber in both aerial dogfighting and surface assaults. Although the production of the fighter was almost halted after initial test runs, and the design of the fighter was never perfected due to its inefficient uh, inefficiency against chaos fighters, the Star Saber was nevertheless brought into full-scale production and authorized for limited sale to civilians in order to recoup losses associated with its designs. Pilots will are willing to utilize the Star Saber during its two-decade production run included the Jedi, who were capable of compensating with the craft's shortcomings by using their abilities with the Force. However, once Republic Fleet Systems uh, developed the Arik class tactical strike fighter shortly before 3976 BBY, the Star Saber design was abandoned. Um, and then we have a little bit of a history, but, uh, you know, we really get the gist of it. This really was not a, a ship for sale all that much. Again, like, like I've been saying in a lot of them, um, bringing ships like this to the forefront to people that, you know, maybe you just watched the movies and like most of us, you know, that's where a lot of it ended. I know I got into some of the extra books because I've been doing Star Wars as a role-playing game for a very long time. Um, I wasn't getting a lot of the comic books when I was growing up because my parents wouldn't spend the money on it. You know, money was always tight for us. So, it, you know, I have that understanding. I'm not upset about it. I'm not bragging. It's just the way, the way life was. Uh, so when I was an adult and I'm getting into this stuff, I learned a lot of a lot of the extra stuff by doing the role playing game and picking up the books. And what did one segment have after another? Or uh, I had gotten the video game for when we talk about um, uh, Shadows of the Empire, uh, stuff like that. Um, so bring some of this extra stuff to light to my small world. Um, so with, with the beautiful thing of the internet today and everything out there, we get a lot more technology to bring all this out here. So you get to see this is just wonderful to, to look at the design here. And if you want to throw it into, like I've said, your Starfinder, uh, Star Trek, um, if you wanted to throw it into GURPS or, um, my mind is drawing a blank here this morning. Um, traveler, um, you know, these designs lend themselves to being able to be slightly modified one way or another. Um, I could very easily see trying to maybe put some warp nozzles cells on there or modify it in some other way or however you, you imagine it. Uh, the beautiful thing with these games, looking at this in a game standpoint, is... We can take these ideas and we can put them wherever. When we look at some of the other things that they've developed for, like a Star Trek or something else, um, Buck Rogers, a lot of the ships that they used in Buck Rogers in the old TV show were actually different ships that they were designing for Battlestar Galactica. So they would, nope, this ship didn't work out here. We didn't want to use it, but hey, we have this other series we're going to use it for. Same thing here. Um, you know, we can borrow and share and all that stuff. You know, if you were ever going to talk to George Lucas or Gene Roddenberry, I'm sure they would be fully on board with saying, hey, go ahead and share from each other because they shared from each other as well. Um, and they both recognized that they were two sides of the same coin. So there's nothing wrong with any of us saying this is a wonderful design. I would love to take this and put it into whatever. So, with that being said, here we are, and, you know, use your imagination. Our imaginations cost us nothing, and it's our greatest asset in the world. Um, so, why not use it? So, as always, thank you for listening to me ramble on. I always appreciate you guys visiting. We'll see you in the next video.